I've had to change things up a little bit this morning because of some technical issues, so I'm going to be winging it a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, it's just going to be a short service, a time to praise God, to ask for God's help in this complicated time, in this uh, crazy world we live in, and then uh, in uh, some time of prayer. So, it's uh, pretty much time to start, and uh, I've got a hymn in my head, it's actually a hymn that reminds us of, of uh, the beauty of creation, and uh, the words I've got here are ones that have been modified slightly to talk about the care of creation, which is lovely, I'll just sing those because I don't have any others to choose from right now, but it's uh, also perhaps a nice hymn for Father's Day called This Is My Father's World. And it was written by a man called Maltby D. Babcock. Uh, he lived from 1858 to 1901. And uh, I just love the way it describes the beauty of the, the world around us and reminds us of God's grace and glory in all of that. And those who know me know that I've been doing a lot of mountain biking recently and uh, it's sort of reviving my passion for the outdoors and for going hiking and all those things that I like to do. And uh, I just find that when I'm out in the, in the, on the trails, I just am amazed by the beauty of, of creation that God sustains, that God puts in place in these little bits of semi-untouched wilderness that we, that we get to up on the mountains. Remind us that the world continues, even though us humans make up so many mistakes. So this is God's will, and uh, I invite us just to pray before we begin. Loving God, thank you so much for the opportunity to worship together, even though we are apart this morning. May your Holy Spirit just fill us with a sense of your presence and togetherness as a community. May that togetherness extend beyond just our awareness of our own congregation but a togetherness with all of those who are going through a difficult time at this time, at this moment, and that you'll give us the strength that we need, the courage that we need to face the challenges of each day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So for those who've just joined us, just to say that until mid-July we're going to be having our services online only, um, and then we'll review the situation. It's just that we've noticed that that third wave graph is not looking good in the Western Cape and it would be unfair for us to risk our church members and uh, the healthcare workers, etc. by allowing church to become a place where the COVID virus is spread. Now I'm aware that, that that's really going to be difficult for some of us. So I really want to come and visit as many people in a safe way as possible and perhaps bring communion, etc., to those who really need it. So please be in touch with me so that we can make a plan um, and I can come visit you or even just give me a call so I can uh, be in touch with you. I, I can't phone all a uh, few hundred people on the church, church list and I think many of you would be like, why are you phoning me? Am I in trouble? So please just give me a call, give me a WhatsApp, um, send me an email. Let me know how you're doing. Uh, write something in the comments on the, as you're watching the service today. Let's stay in touch at this uh, kind of confusing time. Also, thank you everybody for my birthday wishes. I'm feeling old. And thank you also for the Father's Day wishes. And mm -hmm. happy Father's Day to those who are celebrating Father's Day at this time. Okay. My phone is making buzzing noises. I hope you're not getting, getting them. This is my father's world And to my listening ears All nature sings and round me rings The music of the spheres This is my father's world I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is our Father's world. Oh, let us not forget 
that though the wrong is up so strong, God is the ruler, yeah. He trusts us with His world to keep it clean and fair. All earth and trees, all skies and seas, all creatures everywhere. This is my Father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear Him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens ring, God reigns, let earth be glad. Amen. Because of all the changes in uh, setup this morning, I've sent my computer that had all my service details to the office to broadcast the uh, FM service, and I'm just going to be doing the um, service here, so I just have to get mm -hmm. to the um, website, I have to also turn off notifications on my phone right now, it's buzzing and it's getting lots of messages, which is cool, so excuse me, I'm not going to touch your TV or your computer, I promise, I'm just adjusting my phone here. Okay, this is kind of confusing. Thanks for your patience. I put passwords in my iPad to keep my kids from fiddling too much. So every time I want to do something, I have to um, enter a password, which is really irritating. But uh, it's a way of keeping my kids from getting up to too much mischief on the device, and me, I suppose. We will listen to Psalm 9, verse 9 to 20. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, so that I may recount all your praises, and in the gates of door Zion rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net that they hid has their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, do not let mortals prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. The psalmist calls out to God in a time of, of struggle and in a time when he's feeling really oppressed and put down. And uh, we know that David goes through various phases in his life. And some of them, he's a, a strong and mighty warrior and he's the king. But for most of his experience, he is suffering at the hands of those around him. And so perhaps we need to think a little bit about, about that kind of experience as we pray. Let's pray. Lord, you are a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. So at this moment, as we think of all the anxiety that we are going through, as people of South Africa, as people all over the world, 
We ask, O Lord, that you would truly remind us that you are our stronghold, that we can set our foundation in you, that we can remember that you will sustain us and keep us. So we put our trust in you, O Lord, and we know that you'll never forsake us or forget us. We remember, Jesus, who you are the one who came to live amongst us and and go through all our trials and tribulations with us as a human being just like us, to be tested in every way. And we know that even when you went to to the worst that the world could do, when you died upon the cross, you did not stop loving us, but you rose again to show us that your love triumphs over all the brokenness of the world. And so, loving God, We ask that you would remind us to put our trust in you, to not set up traps, to not not get angry, to not be bitter and, and cynical, but to live in hope in you. So we remember from verse 18 of Psalm 9, the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Lord God, we put our trust in you, knowing that in our poverty of spirit, in our need, you will supply all that we need in order for us to become the people that you've called and created us to be. And so this morning, as we praise you, as we bring our lives to you, we ask for the grace of your forgiveness. We have sinned against you in the ways that we have thought in the ways that we have spoken, in the things that we have done and the things that we have not done, in our attitude, in our neglect, in our lack of care. We confess all our brokenness and our inadequacy to you. And as we confess this to you, we remind ourselves once again that it is only in you that we can have the victory. So we put our trust in you, O Lord, Lift us up, strengthen us, do not forget us forever. We hear your words, O Jesus, as you speak grace into each of our hearts, saying, my child, your sins are forgiven. As you breathe power into our lives, saying, go and sin no more, you help us to become people that you called, created us to be, living in love with you our God and our Father, our friend and our brother, learning each day to to follow you more closely in the way of love, in the way of love for one another and for those around us. Help us, O Lord, we pray. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This morning, uh, Besides the psalm, I want to share with you a, a hymn, uh, a hymn that's been on my mind. And um, the ladies group, the Tuesday ladies group, have been talking about having a meeting where we, we reflect on some of the hymns that they love. And I want to share with you a hymn that has really been carrying me through the past few weeks, and it's just been one playing in my head. And although it's been playing in my head, I'm not sure I'm going to get the tune quite right, So I'm just going to sing it a cappella and maybe I'll be making up the tune. Who knows? Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light. Son of righteousness arise, triumph for the shades of night. Day spring from on high be near, Day star in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn, 
unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return, till thy mercy's beams I see, till they inward light impart, glad my eyes and warm my heart. Is it then this soul of mine pierced the gloom of sin and grief? Fill me radiancy divine, scatter all my unbelief. More and more thyself display, shining to the perfect day. I'm not sure I did the hymn justice, but it is a beautiful hymn written by Charles Wesley. And uh, it's sometimes confusing if you're not a Methodist minister student, you get confused about who's Charles Wesley, who's John Wesley, and what kind of Wesley is what. But in the 18th century, John and Charles Wesley were the formidable team that, that preached and sung the Methodist church into being. Now, they were both Anglican clergy, and the Methodist church wasn't really a church when it began. It was a society. So although there were services on a Sunday, Methodist class meetings met outside of normal church services. They weren't allowed to meet at the same time as church. And in these meetings, people got together, they sung these hymns, and they asked each other, how goes it with your soul? And they held each other accountable to grow spiritually and grow closer to God and, and to become more like Jesus. As John Wesley preached, he developed um, a, a, a deeper understanding of the idea of how God saves us um, in a deep spiritual way in a way that truly changes our hearts, that, that helps us to become, become more loving, more like Jesus. And so often we think of uh, Methodism as kind of maybe a bit staid and, 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 and formal because of the word Methodist. But the word Methodist was, was given to the Methodists because they were so methodical in, in their discipline. But their discipline of praying, of fasting, of, of visiting the poor, of, of preaching and attending services was not to prove that they were holy or better than anyone else, but was to grow in love with Christ and to become more like him. And as I mentioned prayer, I forget that I haven't prayed as I began this little reflection sermon. So Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. And so I was doing a bit of research into this hymn that I just sang, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Skies, and I can't put it up on the screen for you this morning, so if you just uh, Google it, or, or, or uh, I'll send out the words for it via WhatsApp later. And I worked out that Charles Wesley, so John Wesley was the preacher, Charles Wesley was the singer um, and the, the hymn writer, that Charles Wesley must have written this hymn before he was 33 years old. And Charles Wesley is famous for, for many hymns, more than 150 hymns in the Methodist hymn book, and you'll be glad to know you'll pick up Charles Wesley hymns in Catholic hymn books, in Anglican hymn books all over the world. You'll find many hymns by Charles Wesley. Some of the famous ones are And Can It Be That I Should Gain, The Christmas Carol, Hark, The Herald Angels Sing, Love Divine, or Love's Excelling, over a thousand tongues to sing. These, these great hymns that we sing and belt out in church services, at royal weddings, and all sorts of amazing things. These songs, hymns, were written by Charles Wesley. And they were inspired by the Methodist movement that spoke very, uh, that emphasized a, a personal and warm, loving relationship, intimate relationship with Christ, not a sort of distant relationship. And, and witness to the idea that God could move into your heart and transform your life. Now, this isn't a new idea, but sometimes as Christians, as church, we become very distanced in our relationship with God. We, we sort of let it all be technical and humdrum. But 
what the Methodists emphasized was the hope of a religion, a faith that could be experienced in true relationship with God. And so this hymn just reminds me of, of, of how our lives can be made rich when we are in relationship with God. So, the first verse, Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light, Son of righteousness arise, triumph o'er the shades of night, day spring from on high be near, day star in my heart appear. And it's just such a beautiful and quick way of taking the image of, of, of Christ who is the creator with God of all of creation. And perhaps you, you're singing this hymn early in the morning as you wake up and say your early morning prayers and you're watching the sunrise over the horizon and you're seeing the, the different colors over the mountains, etc. And you're saying, Christ whose glory fills the skies. And so as you remember that, that Christ's glory fills the skies, you remember that all of this beauty is his creation. But at the same time, as we reflect on the sunrise, on the beginning of a new day, we listen to what Wesley is writing here. Triumph o'er the shades of night. And each of us, not in every day and every morning, but each of us in our lives has a lot of that darkness going on, a lot of that struggle going on from day to day. And this prayer, this hymn, Wesley is inviting Christ with all his glory, with all his beauty that fills all of the skies to triumph over the shades of night in our hearts. Realization that each of us has so many shadows that we just, we can't face on our own. But with God's help, we can. And so just like the sun shines over the landscape and brings light to all the world, Wesley's saying, day spring, from on high be near, day star in my heart appear, saying, let the sun of righteousness, let the sun, S-O-N, and the S-U-N sun, shine in my heart and warm me up and help me to become the warm, loving person that I'm created to be, and not just the cold, dark, and often injured and bitter person that I often am. Isn't this beautiful, just in one verse, taking us from all of creation down to that day star in my heart appear, saying, warm my cold heart and help me to become the person that I'm meant to be. The next verse, dark and cheerless is the morn, unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return till thy mercy's beams I see, till they inward light impart, glad my eyes and warm my heart. Isn't that a beautiful description of what your relationship with Christ should be, what your faith should be. Your faith should not be dark and jealous. It is only when you're not accompanied by Christ that you experience that dark cheerlessness. But in Christ's love you experience the fullness of joy of Christ's light shining in your life. He says, glad my eyes and warm my heart. Isn't that a beautiful prayer to pray that, that our eyes would be made glad with the mercy and the love of God. And that as we go out into the world, we'd see with God's loving eyes and hopefully others would see the love of God in our eyes and warm my heart. That we would be transformed in character in heart, in, in person, to become the people that we're created to be. And all of this is couched not in saying, this is in my strength or my power, but this, O oh God, is in your power. We're saying, day star in my heart appear. We're praying to God, saying, come and shine this light in me. We're saying that my morning, my days, my life is, is dark and cheerless unless you're keeping company with me, unless you are strengthening me and helping me to be the person that I'm meant to be. So we're inviting God to walk with us through our lives, through our, through our, our struggles to give us the, the hope that we need. 
And finally, visit then the soul of mine. Visit then the soul of mine. Again, inviting God to become part of your life. Inviting God into your heart in Jesus. Not just thinking of your faith as a kind of, oh, I believe that there is a God and that God is far away up there. But saying, God, come into my soul, come into my heart, come into my mind. Visit then the soul of mine. Pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me, radiant sea divine. Scatter all my unbelief. One of my friends said, I'm not sure about scattering all my unbelief. And I get what he's saying, because we often don't leave enough room for the struggle that we have with doubt as Christians. But the belief that that is being the unbelief that, that he's inviting us to scatter, especially in Wednesday's time, would more be associated with unbelove, lack of trust in God. Not sort of a uh, sound it's hard to say in a short short space of time, not sort of a rational belief, but a trust in God. So we're saying, come into my soul, visit then the soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin and grief, take away all the negativity of my heart and the brokenness of my heart and, 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 and shine it away. Fill me with your radiance, O oh God. Scatter my unbelief, help me to trust you more and more. And finally, lastly, more and more thy self-display shining to the perfect day. And that last line of that third verse, I mean, this has taken us, this is a, a huge lesson in theology in, in a three-verse hymn that's bringing us to that hope that, that as Christ reveals himself more and more in us, we'll become more and more like him because of his grace working in our hearts and shining to the perfect day. That one day we will be perfected, that the fullness of God's love will be revealed in us, and we will perfectly love those around us. We might not get everything right, but our intentions will be pure. And eventually, we hope that God's plan will be worked out, and love will be perfected in each of us. Let us pray. O oh, Jesus Christ, your glory fills the skies. As you remember each morning just how you bring light to all of the world, that more than the sun shines over the darkness of night, you, Son of Righteousness, rise in our hearts, peer in our hearts and drive away all the darkness and the brokenness and the bitterness that stress and, and, and hurt causes. Renew us and refresh us. Give us a new morning, a new day, a new sense of hope, a new sense of your presence. So many days we try to start without you. Dark and cheerless is the morn unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return. Till thy mercy's beams I see. And so, Lord, help us to see your mercy at work in our heart, transforming us and renewing us, imparting your inward light, so that it would shine from deep within our being all the way to our eyes and our heart, that we would be full of your love, experiencing it in a personal and intimate way, inviting you into us. And so, in that final verse, we say, Lord, visit then the soul of mine. Pierce the gloom of sin and grief. So we ask that with the sword of your word, your spirit, you would just cut into the, those broken parts of our hearts. That you would cut into the, the sin of gloom and grief, the gloom of sin and grief. And that you'd bring us healing and renewed strength. That you'd fill me, fill us with your radiancy. That you'd scatter our lack of love and trust. That each day, more and more, you'd display yourself to us so that we see you more clearly and follow you more closely. 
shining to the perfect day and your plans are fulfilled and we finally become the people that you've called and created us to be. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. this close the service with uh, just a closer walk with me and I pray that every day you'd walk a little closer with God I am weak but thou art strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as I as I walk, let me walk close with thee, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, this my plea, daily walking close with thee, let it be, dear Lord. Let it be through this world of toils and snares. If I fall to Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, this my plea. Daily walking close with thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is old. Time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely home to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, this my plea. Daily walking close with thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. I trust that you'll have a amazingly beautiful Sunday today on this Father's Day. As you remember God, your Father, as you remember those fathers around and long departed, as Maybe you celebrate being a father or longing to be a father. There are so many different ways of being parents and being parented in this world. Strength to all of you and God's richest blessing upon you at this time. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.